life. In 2009, Tate presented the exhibition Pop Life, including a work by Richard Prince, Spiritual America. It was a photograph of a photograph of the then 10-year-old Brooke Shields, naked. It was an image that had been taken with the consent of Brooke Shields and her family. The image had, was well known. It was free available online and is still available online. And it was available on publication, in publications on Richard Prince, available in bookshops across the country. Furthermore, the work had been shown in 2007 at the Guggenheim Museum in New York, where there had been no concern expressed. And members of Tate's team had visited New York and tested responses both to the work and to its inclusion in the catalogue. In advance of the exhibition, at the preview, journalists arrived to view the show, and one of them questioned whether we had the right and indeed whether it was appropriate for us to be showing this work. We sought the advice of lawyers and the police. In the meantime, the show had opened with the work on view, but immediately coverage of the issue in the press had encouraged some members of the public to complain to the police who came to view the work during the gallery's opening hours. I have to say that Metropolitan Police behaved with real care and consideration. They have experience of these kinds of issues to a degree that some other police forces across the country might not have done, but they nevertheless came to the view that the work was contravening an act of parliament by its presentation and could be regarded as an incitement. The advice that we took from lawyers led us to decide to remove the work, partly because of its context within the exhibition and partly because of the understanding of the law. The law having been drafted and passed in Parliament in terms of the protection of young children, perhaps, well, almost certainly, without any expectation that it might then be used to prevent the exhibition of a work of this kind. A further factor for us was that the press campaign was resulting in individuals sending letters and messages that would threaten, that threatened the security of the work itself. Tate didn't own the work. We had a duty of care to the owner, not to be able to return it to the owner in good condition. And for those reasons, we decided to remove it. On the further advice of lawyers, we also decided Tate Enterprises, the board of Tate Enterprises, which is a sub uh, committee of the main board of Tate, but independent as, in, as an institution, decided to obscure the image in the catalog. So we were Put, placed in a position that we would not have wanted to be in by a series of events, including obviously press harassment, um, that left us not fully, I would say, defending the position of the artist. <laughs> 